Longtime CBC journalist Joe Schlesinger has died at the age of 90. A foreign correspondent for decades, he reported from the front lines of wars, disasters and revolutions around the world. He was admired and revered by his colleagues here at the CBC for his enormous talent and his gentle good humor. Ron Charles has a look back now at an extraordinary life. The South Vietnamese say they have 10,000 men on the road. Joe Schlesinger's more than half a century of restless curiosity brought Canadians compelling stories from around the world. Death to America. It sounds bloodthirsty, but some of them smile as they yell. And yet Schlesinger's own life story was no less enthralling. Born into a Jewish family in Vienna in 1928, he was raised in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia. We used to live right up there. All the, the whole front there. The rise of Nazi Germany led his parents to send him and his brother to the United Kingdom. After the war, he returned to discover his parents had been killed in the Holocaust. In Prague, his English got him a job at the Associated Press News Service. But with the communist rulers cracking down on journalists, he had to escape Czechoslovakia once again. He made it through the Iron Curtain all the way to British Columbia, where he enrolled in university, edited a student newspaper, and eventually worked at a local daily. Soon he was on the move again, to a few media jobs in Toronto, then London, and then to Paris and the International Herald Tribune. This is CBC News today. Now with a young family, he decided to return to Canada in 1966, holding editorial management positions at the CBC. No one here seems eager to die in the last moments of this war. But anxious to get back into the field, Schlesinger there. launched a long career as one of Canada's preeminent foreign correspondents, covering they wars, disasters and revolutions across the globe. Police. He credited his wife, whom he called Mike, and their two daughters for keeping him grounded. She kept his family together. She raised my daughters, the wonderful educated, loving human beings, and successful too. One of Schlesinger's most compelling stories was the 1989 Velvet Revolution and the fall of communism in the former Czechoslovakia, the country he fled twice. I mean, for me, going back to Prague that November, 50 years after I'd first left as a refugee, 40 years after I'd left as a refugee for the second time. It was a kind of personal vindication. Forget all that stuff about loving Paris in the springtime. August is the month to be here. What's happening here is not some outrageous abuse of human rights, but just disregard of human rights. Schlesinger officially retired from CBC in 1994, but continued to do analytical stories and documentaries for another two decades. It's such a privilege to be able to spend one's life watching the world unfold and actually being paid for it. Ron Charles, CBC News, Toronto. Former CBC News foreign correspondent Brian Stewart joins me now. Uh, he's charted a similar career arc as Joe Schlesinger and joining us in studio. Thank you so much for coming in. And, My pleasure. You know, we all got the news a short time ago. Uh, certainly a longtime friend and colleague of yours. And I gather you just saw Joe, was it last week? Yeah, just a week ago. I went in with Tony Berman, his former news yes. boss. And we saw him. We knew the time was very short. And it, we all had the sense it might be the last time. But I was actually quite pleased that he, his spirits were high. At least for about 25 minutes, we, we joked about world politics. I always remember Joe <laughs> and this uh, uh, special humor about what was going on in the world. And he still had it right to the very end. Isn't that and nice? And he had us chuckling. Yeah, it was really a nice visit. That's nice to hear. We chatted yeah. with Peter Mansbridge last hour, and that was one of the things he said, too, that, you know, age 90 and still so plugged in oh. and talking about Donald Trump. Absolutely. He never, you know, he was, and not just, not just Trump, you know, he was on to Europe and what Europe may have been doing wrong, and he was such a, a global mind and a global reporter that he really kept uh, in tune with the world uh, right to the very end, which was lovely to see. 
We're hearing words today um, like, you know, gentleman, uh, elegant, one-of-a-kind journalist. When you think about Joe today, what do you think? Uh, sophistication comes to my mind very fast. He was, he came from a remarkable European background, you know, his mm -hmm. parents were murdered in the Holocaust. He was lucky to survive and, and come to, eventually to Canada. But he was well-educated. He was a, a, had a European sensibility. He always took the sophistication into the, the field. He had a great context for stories, a great sense of history. He could discuss the historical depth of, uh, of um, stories so well with him. Uh, and he always seemed to know more than we did, <laughs> because he did. And uh, let's face it. And um, he, he, the other thing was he was a craftsman. I used to love looking at his scripts afterwards and say, where did he think of that line? Uh -huh. you, you had one line <laughs> once that it took me seven years, but I said, I'm going to steal that line. I'll only steal one line in my life, but it's going to be a Joe Schlesinger line, and I managed to do it. Uh -huh. Seven years it took me. That, that little bit of envy and admiration uh -huh. that well, happens with a colleague, exactly. isn't it? That, there is. We're a competitive business. We, yeah. we love each other in the field. We're, we're great buddies, and we have great times together. But when we get on a big story together, like the Berlin Wall or the Gulf War, there's a certain competitive nature. Of course. And, and I always felt when Joe came into the story, the best we could hope for was maybe silver or bronze. <laughs> he was going to get the gold, and he invariably did. He was a, he was a master. I think he was perhaps the greatest uh, Canadian news correspondent uh, of his time. Of his particular time. When I remember looking back at Joe's stories, there was a passion there that almost made you tear up when you were watching some of his stories. You both uh, traveled the world telling stories, uh, many times in war zones, and as you alluded to the fact he lost his parents to the Holocaust, he managed to be saved by the kinder transport. Yeah. How did his past, do you think, uh, influence his journalism? Well, I think it left him uh, with a great pain and I think that pain is, is, can be very valuable in journalism. I think that pain, he was able to have an empathy towards other people that were suffering, towards refugees, uh, and towards people who were under any kind of tyranny. Uh, he, he had a, you know, this enormous rage at tyrants and brutality that they can show to innocent people. And I think that he was very much motivated by the sense also, as many who came out of his particular background, where the world can never, ever, ever go down that route again. And we, journalism has to shine a light in all the dark corners of the world to make sure that things like that don't happen again. So we went to places like El Salvador and, and various wars, um, you know, trying to do the best he could to educate and show the world what was really going on. Not just the people back home, but the, the reporters he worked with in the field. I mean, it was a very educative moment to sit with Joe in a hotel room late at night over maybe a drink and, and discussing, you know, what it is about this story that really is getting to us and what we have to get the message home. And we could throw around historical illusions, but I, I learned so much at his side. It was just uh, wonderful. And he, he always made us perform better. We wrote scripts better. We checked our grammar a lot more carefully. <laughs> when he was around, you wanted to do your best when Joe was there. He said near the end that growing old was a full-time job, and he talked about hip replacement and the medical care, and he spoke very publicly about all of that. And he that said, you know, like training for the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Again, growing old, you have to be in training the whole time, and he was. He was. What more should we know about uh, the humanity behind the lens, the man that uh, viewers didn't necessarily get? To. Well, he was a... Uh, he loved his wife. He, he loved his children. He uh, loved his friends very much. Uh, he kept in touch with uh, colleagues over the years. And uh, I, I think, I didn't know him socially all that well, but whenever we'd meet up, it was a case to get in touch with everybody. He dropped names that people he wanted to know about and ask about. And uh, I think he had a tremendously warm side to him that uh, sometimes that sometimes the cold exterior that he would put on for a report gave a false illusion of mm. just how warm Joe was. 
and how humorous. He was a very funny guy, and he kept me in stitches sometimes just with his, his um, put-downs of certain politicians. <laughs> oh, yes, hopefully uh, that you yeah. can write that in a book someday. Yeah, 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 that's right. Brian, thank you so much for your insights. My As pleasure. we all remember uh, Joe uh, Schlesinger today, it's, it's nice to hear a little bit about uh, what it was like to compete with him as a journalist, to admire him and work alongside him. Thank you for well, this. Well, thank you very much for having me. Former CBC News foreign correspondent Brian Stewart joining us in studio.